Actually, I can do it uh, from scratch. Okay, so this is last week's homework. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, thank you. <coughs> okay, I hope everybody's uh, solved it because it wasn't very hard. Um, because it's more or less exactly what we were doing here. So, so in this case, if I want to write this problem in this way, what's going to be what uh, is A, C, and B going to be? Okay, A is a matrix. So what's it look like? Yeah. Three, two, one, three. Three, two, one, three. Why is that? Because it's the uh, volumes of the X one and X two. Yes, it's not the value of the x1 and then and the x2, but uh, what you mean is, is the value of the coefficients for x1 yeah. and x2. The values of x1 and x2, we don't know. But, uh, the coefficients, it's an important difference, distinction between uh, the values of that. So it's these three, three, so this is uh, eight. Okay. And then uh, what is b? So b is the right hand side. So that should. Uh, and, uh, I'm going to spare you more questions. You can have the book. Just don't expect it. Can you leave them on the oh, yeah. table there? Okay. So this is uh, this is this. Right. That's the B. And then the C is the remaining part, oh, which is. The five and the twenty. So C is five and twenty. So that was a warm up exercise. All right. Now, question two wants you to write the initial tableau in the table form that, well, was the idea anyway that we were used to doing last year so that's the one that looks like this it has a basis it has a vowel uh, it has a column for each of the uh, decision variables x1 x2 and it has a column for each of the slack variables x1 and x2 and the initial basis is S1 and S2, and there's also the objective, so let me call it Z. The vowel contains the initial right-hand side, so that's 160, 210, and uh, 0. And then we have the 3 and 1 for X1, and the 2 and the 3 from the green bit. Uh, we have the identity here, and we have minus the objective, and we have zeros there. Okay. Should be should be clear to uh, everyone. Maybe we're accepting those who didn't go to a decision, but uh, we're working on uh, we're working on that. Okay. So that's the first one. So that's uh, the first tableau. Answer to question two. And question three asks you to pivot and uh, yeah well, the usual the usual rule would tell you to pick the most negative element then do the ratios which are 80 and 70 and then pick this as your pivot element which means that So as a reminder, what, what happens is, well, the Z always stays in the basis, we uh, see. S2 is replaced with X2, S1 stays. The pivot row is divided by the pivot element, which is 3, so you get 70, one third, 
one, zero, and one third. And now by row reductions, we take a multiple of that row and add it or subtract it from the other rows with the idea that we want zeros there. Okay, so if we take two times this row and subtract from the top row, 160 minus two times 70 is hopefully 20. Three, take away two thirds, so that was nine thirds, seven thirds. One take away zero is one, and zero take away two thirds is minus two thirds. Is it not? And then adding 20 times this row to the third row um, to get the zero here says that we get. No, what am I doing? <coughs> Oh, yeah. <coughs> so 20 times 70 is 1400 plus zero. Uh, 20. No, I'm doing 20 times this. So 20 thirds minus five is five thirds. 20 times zero, well, this will make zero. And 20 thirds. Added to zero is 23rd, so this gives me up to the next tableau. Do I need to do anything else? No, why not? Yeah, because uh, all these values here are non negative 5 thirds, 20 thirds, and zeros, and that means that the tableau is optimal and everything ends, and that's it, okay? So this is a quick reminder of pivoting from last year, for most of you. All right. Any questions about this homework? Oh. Now, if I can find where So you can self mark for three questions, three marks, depending on how many of them you've solved in advance of this lesson, and put that on the register. And, uh, this count towards. It doesn't count towards the, mark, the final um, mark. Of the, of the module, but what it counts is towards the Christmas prize. Okay? Right. So much for that. Okay, so So this is what we did last week, all right? Now, uh, the two red boxes, the one star and the two star, are giving us what essentially what last year <coughs> we wrote in this tabloid. That looked similar. Well, it does, well, because this matrix is what we have here. Okay. 
the right hand side, well, we need to put it right there. Um, it's minus 15, minus 20, all that's there. Now, uh, the next thing we did, which I can't find, is we also we put it into, but I won't. Okay, so I won't do something that I will we'll do in a, in a couple of minutes. Uh, so the the next thing we did, what did we do last year with this tableau? And it's the same thing that we've just gone through in the homework example. We want to find the pivot element because negative values in the objective row tell us that the tableau is not yet optimal. So we're looking for something negative in that row. Okay? And as a rule of thumb, we took the, the, the least, the most negative, if you want, and that determines the pivot column. And then we determined the pivot row, and that was, it was this row, I think. And so this four is the pivot element. Okay. So what happens when we want to pivot on this tableau? Well, we divide the second row by four. And then we do the row reductions. And so what we got, not very much prepared, looked like this. Okay, the first tableau tells you to change the basis. Replace S2 with X2, but that's a thing. Uh, this tells you that you tell this is previous second row divided by four, and then the row reduced one looks like this. Okay, now, so what we want to do here, when you look at the, the matrix equation, we want to divide the second row by four. Do you know how to divide the second row by four? Using matrix multiplication. <coughs> Linear algebra. How does one divide? How does one get? How do I get a matrix from this one, which is the same as this one, except this row is divided by four, and I only want to be able to use uh, matrix multiplication? How do I do that? Uh -huh. Seems like you've forgotten everything over the summer. So what I what I do is. I take this make this diagonal matrix where I put ones on the diagonal, except in the second entry, because it's the second row that I want to divide by four, where I put one quarter. Now if I do this times this matrix. What do I get? This presumes that you can do matrix multiplication still. Can you? So how does one do matrix multiplication? Anybody? Yes? The same top and bottom rows, but the middle row will be a quarter, one, zero, a quarter, zero. Well, that's what I said, but why? Because when you do the multiplication, you expand the top row of the first matrix, multiplies uh, the first column of the second matrix, that makes the first element one, yeah. one, one, and then you carry on for each row and column. And that's when doing that, expand it out, it means the whole elements in the second row of one. That's right. Yes. So what I'm what I'm doing to multiply the matrix is when I want the first row of the product, I look at the first row of the left 
fault. It's not a the factor, yeah, the left factor. And I take this one zero zero, I can just twist it like this, and I do a one bounce three, zero bounce one, zero bounce one half, and that gives me the three that sits there. I do a one times two, zero times whatever, zero times whatever. One times one, zero times. So, so what I'm going to get in the first row, you see, is it's just a copy of the first row of this matrix, okay? From the definition of matrix multiplication. So, I'm just getting the same first row. Now, <laughs> the third row, that's going to be the same. I'll just get a copy of the third row of matrix call it something well of the right uh, factor okay. and in the middle I get a quarter of the middle row so one quarter one zero one quarter zero Okay. Is everybody with me, or have I lost half of you? Uh, should be your second nature, multiplying, multiplying matrices. Okay. Now, so this is just kind of half of the half of the pivot step because what I've got is got the second row the way I want it. I wanted to divide by four, but now I wanted to row reduce, so I would get a zero there, and a zero there by taking a suitable multiple of that row and adding the other two rows, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I want to multiply the new matrix that I've got by a matrix so that I would get the new tableau, well, part of the new tableau. So what do I need to put into that matrix? On the left. Well, I think you kind of get the idea. So this matrix tells you that um, the first row of the result is going to be 1 times the first row of that, plus 0 times the second row of that, plus 0 <coughs> times the third row of that. Uh, the second row of the result is going to be 0 times the first row, plus 1 quarter times the second row, plus um, 0 times the third row. And the last row of the result is going to be 0 times the first row, plus 0 times the second row, plus 1 times the third row. Now, if I want to do the first row to be one times the first row of this <coughs> minus two times the second row, so I get row. what I need to write is uh, the first row of the result is going to be one times uh, the first row of that matrix minus two times the second row of that matrix plus zero times the third row of that matrix. Okay. The second row I leave untouched, which means it's going to be one times the second row and nothing to do with the others. And the third row, what do I want? Well, I want minus one half of the second row, one times <coughs> the third row, and nothing to do with the first row. So what that's going to give me is apparently 5 over 2, 0, 1, minus 1 half, 0. Well, this one, the second row stays the same, so that definitely is the same as before. And the third one is supposed to be 3 eighths, 0, 
0, minus 1 8 and 1. But whatever, but the, the values are not so overwhelmingly important now. The important thing is the idea of it. So the idea is that I took, I took this matrix, I call it E1, uh, because it's an element, E for elementary row operation. It does, what it does is, it does an elementary row operation, which is, in this case, uh, dividing the second row by, by four. And this one does some elementary row operations as well, so I will call it E2. So now look back at this uh, equation that we had, that we call part of the, that was part of the syntax that worked. So the red star, by using elementary row operations, as just described, um, Described by the matrices E1 and E2 uh, gives me what? Well, what did I do? I took the left matrix, which is, uh, well, I should have given it that name, but uh, just quickly copy it. Actually, the name I'm going to give it is M, but uh, I'll just copy it. And times, well, this is the XS vector equals 100 and, uh, oh no, sorry. I wanted to leave some space. But now I've multiplied the left-hand matrix by first E1, then E2 from the left, Okay, so what I need to do is do the same multiplication on the right hand side. And that will do the same row operations on the right hand side vector as well. Okay, is that clear? Yeah. And yeah, so okay, so for the moment I don't want to bother with the with the objective row, but we'll come to that uh, in a bit as well. Now the idea to take from this is that every pivot step is basically just multiplying things by matrices from the left. Okay, so so that uh, that's the conclusion. Every pivot step. Uh, consists in multiplying the tableau equation so that's the one that we called uh, star red star <coughs> by elementary row operation matrices so in this case it was e1 e2 and so on So I'll call this matrix M. And, uh, and that's the initial matrix where we put uh, the A and the identity next to each other like this. That's what we did last week as well. So we don't know how many, do we know how many pivot steps we will have to do when we start the simplex method? 
No. Just keep going until we get an optimal tableau. Okay? But we somehow hope or know that it is going to stop at some point. And so, so we don't know how many steps we're going to take. But all we know is that after the simplex method finishes, We will have, so this matrix M is going to be multiplied by E1, E2, maybe E3, maybe many different E's, each of them being a row operation in the pivoting. Uh, and this multiplies this XS vector. Um, and we'll have the same. And this is the, what am I doing? This was the right hand side back to B. Okay. So this is what pivoting did. Now we're getting to the interesting question. So let me call this. Product R. It's just a new letter for that product. Now the key question is what is R? So of course you can say, well, we reconstruct what the simplex method did and all the elementary row operations and we multiply them <laughs> all together and we get R. But is there an easier way to know what R is? Who thinks there's an easier way? Who thinks there is no easier way? I wouldn't be telling you if there wasn't an easier way, would I? So what is the easier way? <coughs> well, to, to be able to do it in an easier way, we want to know what the final basis is. If we, if we don't know what the final basis is, then there is no easier way, I don't think. But uh, suppose we know the final basis. B. And now I'll switch to first year, the first year booklet for another second. Okay, so. So in this case, what are the basic variables? S1, X2, and X1. Are they not? S1, X2, X1. So we can see it in that column, but if I didn't <coughs> give you this column, would you know what the basic variables are? You wouldn't. You should know. You know, you do know. How? Yes, exactly. Exactly because we always insisted on was to have the identity matrix when you select the columns that correspond to the basis, right? So you can see that because there's, there's a one in this row and zeros in the rest. S1 has to be the first parenthetical, and X2 has to be the second, and X1 has to be the third in this tabular. Because it means ones and zeros. 
Isn't that after you've already done lots of pivot steps there? This is after I've already done lots of pivot steps. But in fact, it, it's true, no matter how many pivot steps you've done, what we always want to keep is when you select, so, so the basis keeps changing during the pivot, pivot pin, but at any point in time, the basic variables, their columns, taken in the right order, in the top, at least, they form the identity. Okay? Everybody agree with that? So that gives us the key to this question. Because why? Because when we look at um, uh, so what we've got, we know that this. I'm going to destroy my book now. So we know that uh, this bit, yeah, that's what we call R times M now, is it not? Yeah, we, we started with M there, we multiplied it by many elementary matrices, and we call that R, so this is R times M. Okay. So we know that because of, uh, because of the simplex property, We know that if I select the basic columns from this R times M, I'm going to get the identity matrix. Right, so when I do R times M, and now I do this kind of notation, which is bracket B, index B, or subscript B, uh, this gives me the identity. Okay, so any matrix U, say, okay. uh, QB is the that's my definition. <coughs> the matrix we get from Q by selecting the columns in B in the order, in the right order. So B comes with an order, B comes with an order, S1, X2, X1 in this case, and let's say Q has the columns are marked by, by these letters, so I'm taking the S1 column first, X2 column first, X1 column first, S2 column second, X1 column last. Uh, and when I do that, I get the identity. Okay? Agree. Now, the question is, does it matter whether I first do the product and then select the columns, or can I first select some columns somewhere and then do the product? This goes back to your understanding of matrix multiplication. So what? Yes. Would they not be able to consider you know, the right term associated, but you can't multiply it by either direction to get the same? No, but B doesn't really. So this operation, selecting columns, that is not really matrix multiplication. But yeah. So what you're saying is that matrix multiplication is not associated. But it is associated. Yeah, I don't know what you're saying, but the, an argument with uh, not associated or associated uh, it's a bit more basic than, than that. Um, okay, so when we go back to when we were doing the multiplication, well, the first two bits, right? What did we do? We said that. Okay, so what we what we said was um, 
What do we say? Well, to, in order to obtain, if you want to know the first row here, okay, what you need to know is the first row of the left matrix and the whole of the second matrix. So then, you take this times that, pick the first number, this times that, and the second number, and so on. Okay? <coughs> but when we look at it going backwards, it also works, except columns become rows and rows become columns. So if you want, if I want to know the last column here, the only thing I need to know is the last column there, and all of the left matrix. Because the last column I get, now that's not the usual way you probably think about it, normally, I guess, when you're told you to go from left to right, and you say, you know, the first row times the first column, add it all together, that's the first one. But what you can do is, when you want the first column, you can take the first column kind of like this, times the first row, and you get the first column times the second row, you get the second row, the first column times the third row, you get the third row, the third row. So in other words, if I want to know any column here, the only thing I need is the same column in the second matrix and all of the first row. So it doesn't matter whether I pick the columns after multiplying the two matrices, or I pick them from the second matrix before I multiply them. Okay, so it doesn't matter. Because of how matrix multiplication works, We have that, if I select the columns from M first, then times it by R from the left. That's exactly this. So this must be the identity. But now, what's the shape of uh, MD? I don't know if it's switched, but uh, that's not what I mean. <laughs> so how many... Okay, so... Would we need trackers to be like... And B is a transposition of R? No, I don't think so. Okay, so what is, what is MB? Coming from some matrix that we had in the beginning, so in the top line, okay, so going back to the top line. Yeah, okay. No, that's not the right one. I want the first tableau, because this is where we can see, actually, see M. Okay, this is M. Okay. So this is M. That's what, that's what we defined it to be, A and R. Now, from N, it has, how many rows does it have? It has as many rows as there are basic variables. So three. What do I do? I select how many columns? As many as there are basic variables, because I select the ones that correspond to A basis. So, inevitably, I get a square matrix. Okay, so M, is M sub B, M is not a square matrix, but this M sub B is a square matrix. Now, 
Now, back to linear algebra again. If I have a square matrix, and I times it by something, and I get the identity, what is that something? The inverse, yes, exactly. So, therefore, R cannot be anything else than the inverse of this MB. Okay, maybe you don't know this, but if you don't know why that is true, in the book, there's a proof. I won't do it in the lectures because I'm too lazy. I really turn out of time. <clears throat> so, so what have we got? Now we've got... What have we got? Block. So we're going back to, back to here. Okay, we had this equation, which was that R times M uh, See, R times M times XS equals R times B, and I'm going to call it a green star. Are there any colorblind people in the audience? No? So I can use uh, red stars and green stars to distinguish things. I just want to confirm that MB yeah. is the matrix, is the tableau matrix with that very specific basis. Right, so what we're doing is we're looking at a particular basis that we've arrived at. Okay? So in this case, we said it's the optimal basis, but actually we never used it, so, we, so it works for any basis whatsoever. So if, if I fix a basis, if I select some variables among all the decision and slag variables, all the x's and all the s's, whenever I select one, I can. my goal is I want to be able to write the whole tableau. Okay? So when I look, this was my final tableau, but I arrived at by the pivot operation. What I want now is, if somebody gives me just, I'm telling you S1, X2, X1, give me the whole tableau without doing the pivot. That's, <coughs> that's the idea. Okay, so that's what we're trying to do. So what, what M sub B is, back to your clarifying question, is M is this matrix. Okay? It has the A, the coefficients in the constraints, and it has I, the ones from the slack variables, the, the identity from the slack variables. That's M, and MB is, depending on what exactly B is, I look at B and I select the columns from here. Would you say you'd be given a B, you would have to figure out? Yeah, if you're given a B. Right, so you... If you're not given a B, then you can't do anything. But if I give you the B and say, give me the top one, you don't know whether it's optimal or not, but you're going to find out at some point when you have the tableau, but uh, this is the point of so. Okay, no more things? So, so, and just to... Uh, no, I so, and this, so we had this M. Now, we had that the B was, I can't remember, what was it? Do you have it, then, did it? I think it was S1, X2, X1. Yeah. yeah. So S1, X2, X1. So for this particular B, my MB would be, well, S1. What's the S1 column? 1, 0, 0. X2, what's the X2 column? 2, 4, 1 half. 1 half. And what's the X1 column? 3, 1, 1 half. Right? Well, if, I, well, if you give me a different B, you'll get a different MB. Okay. Well, this is an uh, example. No matter what B you get, you're, like, you're able to get an MB. Now, there's a bit of a problem here, which you probably have noticed, is that... Uh, So far, I've been telling you, pick any three of the variables, but then if it so happens that this MB is not invertible, that it's a singular matrix, you wouldn't get the MB inverse, and then you'd be in trouble. So, 
we have to be careful. So, the for a base is only pick variables that give you an invertible matrix. Right. But uh, yeah, got it. Any more questions? Sorry, sorry, anything. So these are taken from the in, from the initial. Yes, tableau. they're taken from the initial tableau. So we get the base from the final. No, we're well, given. yeah, so, you, so you're given a basis. You don't know whether it's final or whatever it comes from. You take the columns from the initial tableau, put them into MV, do the inverse, and in this way, you get the final tableau or whatever tableau. That's the idea. Uh, yeah, it's kind of uh, hard because uh, I'm just about to come to uh, saying what uh, the, the idea is. So this green star, now we can say what green star is. So green star is... MB inverse uh, times M times XS equals uh, MB inverse times B. And remember that M was A and I. Okay, so this is what sits in there. That's just one. Bear with me for another minute. I just want to show one last thing before we go. So how does this sit in the tableau as we're used to? Okay, we had that's the usual shape of our tableau, where we have the basis, we have the vowel. We have the X's and we have the S's and we have the Z row. That was what we were used to. But now we've got it in a in a different, in a somewhat different shape. <coughs> but you can see that well, what is the basis? That's just the basic variable, so that's just the B. The vowel, that's the right hand side. So after some pivoting from originally just being little b, they have become this. So what is here is m b inverse times little b. And this whole thing was m, and it consisted from k and i in the beginning. And again, we can do multiplying this times m column by column. So what we're going to get here is just MB inverse times I, times the identity. So MB inverse times just the identity is MB inverse. Okay. And, and on the left, we're multiplying MB inverse times A, so we get MB inverse times A. So this perhaps clarifies what all the story was good for. It is good for if I give you the basis, or a basis, uh, you can kind of uh, straightforwardly give me this part of the tableau. And you can also give me the objective row, but uh, we have no time for that now, so we'll do that next week. Uh, and then, uh, yeah. <coughs>